Good morning, students and staff. I hope you guys are having a terrific week. With everything that's going on in our country around violence uh, and school safety, I wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about Whitefield High School uh, and the things that we have in place here to keep you safe. As you're all aware, there have been some uh, tragedies around the country recently involving uh, violence and threats. As a former teacher and principal, I can tell you that there's nothing more important to me than the safety and security of our students and staff here at Whitefield High School. So school should be a safe place for you to come. You should have a safe place to learn. This should be a safe learning environment. And we do everything that we can to ensure that here within the walls of Whitefield High School. As more and more threats of violence happen around the country, it's inevitable that it's going to trickle into the buildings here in Whitefield School District 3, and unfortunately that has been the case for several of our buildings. We certainly do have systems in place to handle those threats and to make sure that everybody is safe within our building. So that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today, just for a few minutes. I, I just want to assure everyone that Whitefield High School is a safe place. We do everything we can, both in public and behind the scenes, to try to do everything uh, to make sure that we have a safe learning environment here at Whitefield High School. We do have systems in place to keep you safe. We've got a buzzer system at the doors, of course, as you guys know about. Everybody that comes in the building needs to show an ID to come into the building. We do have security cameras both inside and outside the school, positioned throughout the building and outside of our campus to help us to maintain safety and security of our perimeter. We uh, have the outer doors locked throughout the day, as you know, and we have wonderful campus security uh, and SRO within our building to really uh, help us maintain the safe atmosphere that we're looking for. I'd like to uh, talk for a minute about some of the, the significance of making threats towards students or staff here uh, within our building or within our district. That is, uh, making threats is no joke. Whether you perceive it as being uh, a prank or a joke, it is certainly not something that we uh, that we take lightly. We certainly treat all of them with the utmost seriousness and we look into all of those to make sure that we are doing everything we can to keep you safe here at school. When someone does make a threat towards students or staff, we do several things to, uh, to ensure the safety. First of all, we investigate it completely. We do a threat assessment to determine the significance of the threat and then we also do involve law enforcement and so there are school consequences and there are often criminal charges that we have that go along with the school charges the school consequences are suspension that can lead to expulsion and for the criminal offenses uh, the criminal charges can certainly be misdemeanor and they are charging people with felonies now for making threats against students or staff so again it is no joke last thing I wanted to talk about just a responsible reporting through the use of social media that's usually the way that these things get perpetuated and they continue through social media uh, guys I, I would just encourage you social media is not a bad thing but how it's used is very important. Please don't spread rumors through social media. It does nothing to help us. We would really appreciate it if you see something, say something. We have ways in which to report those things. We've gotten lots of safe to tell tips recently that we really appreciate. Tell a trusted adult, whether it's your parent, could be a staff member here at school, SRO, campus security, principal, counselor, teacher, whoever that is, tell somebody. We'll be happy to help you with that. And again, please don't spread rumors on social media. It really does nothing to help our investigation. And oftentimes, as you know, with rumors, rumors tend to be inaccurate. They tend to um, just not help the process. So if you see something, say something. Make sure you talk to people about what your concerns are. So I'd just like to close uh, with a couple of things. We are a safe school. We do have systems in place to help keep you safe, to help keep you safe. Even if you don't see everything that's going on on the surface, there are lots of things that are going on behind the scenes to help keep you safe at schools. So, and biggest and, and most of all, I want to thank all of you for reporting things to our campus security and to our administration. It's because of you and your help in the hallways that we can keep our building safe. So again, thank you very much for continuing to work the things that you hear about and you see. Thanks again for all that you do. Whitefield High School is the best school in the district and we are the best school uh, because we have the best students and we have the best staff. So thanks again for all you do and go Gladiators. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Good morning, everybody. It's hey. Wednesday. Happy Woo. Hump Day. Woo for lunch today, the food wizard is making you homemade pizza. Oh yeah, homemade pizza, lots of fun toppings. Come on down and see us. And on Thursday... I do believe it's a barbecued pork sandwich. I bet it is. Barbecued pork sandwich. And what's with it? What, it, what has to be with it? Oh, barbecue means coleslaw. coleslaw. Okay, great. Have a great one. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. My name is Jada. 
My favorite teacher is Miss Butala because she just she's really nice and it's fun to come into a classroom where she's like excited to teach us and she likes to goof off with us a little bit every now and then so it's fun. My favorite high school memory has been homecoming this year because I was a nominee so it's fun to get to go through like the whole homecoming court. I'm planning on going to college at UCCS. I chose UCCS because it just seemed like the best fit for me at the time. Um, it's close to home so I'm planning to study medicine so I can become a doctor. So after college I want to be a doctor and I want to work my way up to that so maybe at the time just working in different parts of the hospital to get more experience. I would say just enjoy the moment, do all the fun things that you can because senior year goes by really, really fast. We'll be back after the Gladiator Sports Update with fundraising information and other events happening this week. But first, we're throwing it to Moose Santos for some sports news. Good Wednesday morning, Glads. I'm Moose Santos with your Gladiator Sports Update. Juniors and seniors, powder puff time is right around the corner and student cabinet needs players, cheerleaders, and coaches. If you would like to participate, see Miss Melton in room 103 to sign up and pick up your permission slips. Permission slips are due by next Friday, March 23rd. Student cabinet is also looking for some strong warriors for the Warrior Games on April 13th against Fountain Fort Carson. If you would like to sign up, please see Miss Melton in room 103. Let's keep our winning streak going. Before we jump into sports schedules and scores for the week, we'd like to give a shout out to Cole Munoz, who signed his letter of intent last week to run cross country for CSU Pueblo. Congratulations, Cole, and best of luck to you with the Thunderwolves. In forensics news, the team is headed to state competition this weekend in Fort Collins at Rocky Mountain High School. Best of luck to Dylan Shea, Josh Haar, Jada Horn, and Lauren Wadsworth. Turning to baseball, the varsity team took to the mound last night against Fountain Fort Carson but couldn't hold on to the W. The boys are on the road tomorrow night at 7 p.m. against Pueblo East in Pueblo. Our ladies soccer team has started with a bang this season. They traveled to Fountain Fort Carson last night. The ladies are back on the road at Dutch Clark Stadium tomorrow night against Pueblo East. In tennis news, our ladies are showing no love for their early opponents. They played Fountain Fort Carson yesterday afternoon. Our varsity track team is in Pueblo this Saturday for the Bulldog Invite. We'll have more information on Friday and results on Monday. Our newly re resurrected men's swimming team traveled to Pueblo on Tuesday afternoon and returned with some very hopeful time. We expect to hear great things from the swim team this year. We have final notes from the basketball court. First, congratulations to our Lady Glads who made it to the state playoff last week. Thanks for a great season and for playing some classy basketball, even when faced with tough obstacles. Thanks also for the fans, cheerleaders, teachers, pet band, and parents who made the trip up to Denver. The madness that is March has started and before we finish up the season for basketball, there will be an all-star game tomorrow night in Bowers Gym. Players from the Colorado Springs Metro League will take on players from the South Central League. Come watch Aaliyah Ricketts and Sharice Bailey play when the girls tip off at 6 p.m. and stay to catch TJ Davis and Trey Pierre when the boys take the court at 7.30. Ticket prices are a reasonable $2 for students and $4 for adults. And finally, four of our NJRTC cadets are headed up to Connecticut this weekend where the Navy is christening a newly commissioned ship called the USS Colorado. Let's hear what they have to say. Senior Chief Dylan Lowenstein. I'm Cadet Lieutenant Alexander Rosenbaum. Cadet Lieutenant Rosak. Cadet Lieutenant Junior Grade Large. We are going to Connecticut to commission the USS Colorado, which is a submarine. And what it means to commission one is basically before a boat or ship or submarine or whatever can actually be in the naval fleet, it has to be commissioned. So there's a whole ceremony for it and we are doing the color guard for that. Originally USS Colorado, uh, they were originally just ships uh, during like, World War One to kind of bring back the famous name USS Colorado. We're gonna come in with a commissioning on Saturday in the morning. So they'll present the crest and we're gonna present the colors and basically kick off the whole ceremony. We will be the only Colorado school there. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to christen a submarine like this, especially one that's named after our own state. And it's just great to get our school out there to be able to do this event and it just gains uh, just leadership experience all around. I really just want to see the state. I've never been on the opposite side of the Mississippi River, so it's been a new experience. We're going to be visiting a lot of museums, Eating. a lot of naval museums up there too. Eating a lot of seafood as well. Yeah, too. Way to go, gentlemen. What a great honor. Make us proud. That's it for our Gladiator Sports Update. Good luck to all our athletes 
in their games and practices. I'm Luis Santos, now back to you, Corinne and Jeremiah. Thanks, Moose. The book fair started this week and it will run through Friday. Stop by the magazine room in the library at lunch, during advisory with the library pass and after school to check out the books available. They have some other cool items besides books for sale. Go check it out. If you signed up to donate blood, the blood drive is tomorrow, Thursday, March 15th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the small gym. Be sure to have some breakfast and, and drink plenty of water before you donate blood. If you're interested in becoming a Link, link Crew leader, there will be an informational meeting today in the auditorium. They will give you information about Link Crew and will be handing out applications. If you cannot be at the meeting today, applications will be available after lunch outside of the rooms 124, 123, 201. Juniors and seniors, the prom theme has been revealed and this year it's Masquerade. The prom will be on Saturday, April 21st from 6.30 p.m. to midnight at the Doubletree World Arena. Ticket prices March 19th through the 21st are $45. Starting March 22nd, ticket prices go up to $50. Because we must have a head count for dinner, you cannot buy tickets at the door. Make a note of these simple rules for wearing masks. All masks must be pre-approved, so please check in with Mrs. Molino in room 166 or Mrs. Fowler in room 144 during lunch and after school through Friday before prom. You can wear your masks in the ballroom area, but when you are in the general hotel area, including at check-in, chaperones must be able to see your beautiful faces. Oh, and remember, masks must be removable and full face masks are not allowed. Save the date for this Thursday night. The Widefield and Mesa Ridge Jazz Bands will be performing with a local professional band from the Springs in a very special concert. If you like jazz music, you won't want to miss this. The concert starts at 7 p.m. And, and is a meager $5 to hear. Proceeds from the evening go directly back to the band programs as scholarships for students who need to rent instruments or pay fees. You should come enjoy some great music. That's all for our news today. I'm Karen McAfee. And I'm Jeremiah Jones, and this was your KWHS News.